heavy. Bored. All right, yeah. <laughs> let's get to uh, let's get to litany in which certain things are crossed out. Yeah. So this one's like my favorite. I recorded myself reading it on Twitter like months ago, but then I deleted it because it annoys me on Twitter when you record a poem or when you record anything, I think it only lets you record like a minute or something. And then it goes into like a new recording. And this poem is so long yeah. that it's like, six recordings. And I was like, this is too much. And then I deleted it. <sighs> I've been noticing, like I've been trying to put out like fucking clips from this podcast to like promo shit. And Twitter is the, the restrictions on video and like voice stuff. Like if you're trying to share actual clips of something, because I find at least to like trying to promo shit like this, like, people don't want to click links they want to click play like they wanted to have it like right in front of them and click play right. and they only let you do two minute videos so if you have a clip that's like two minutes and 30 seconds like it doesn't let you put it out there and it doesn't let you do like what instagram and tiktok let you do which is let you trim it down to like fit their like frame or whatever before you post so like yeah twitter is it's weirdly primitive in that way with like trying to share media other than just text or uh Elon Musk, let us read poetry on Twitter.com. Yeah, yeah, fucking Elon Musk. He would like this book. He, he would get a Richard Sykin t-shirt and like wear it. But actually, yeah, even speaking of this poem, I know that like I'm just diving right in and we Go can like yeah. circle back. But like even on the first page of it, page 11, who am I? I'm just a writer. I write things down. I walk through your dreams and invent the future. Like just the reason I bring that up is because we were just talking about Jesse Lacey and brand new and on Deja and Tendu. Okay. I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't, he literally says like, these are the words you wish you wrote down. These are the, this is the way you wish your voice sounds, you know, like this kind of awareness of like, I am the narrator and you're going to listen to me. And like, even later in this poem, I'm pretty sure he says, Oh yeah. So on page 14, okay. If you're so great, you do it. Here's the pencil, make it work. And that's also like a sarcastic taunt that it's kind of like, you can't do it, bitch. Like I'm the only one who can tell this story this way. And like, you're not going to be able to do it. So shut up basically. <laughs> yeah, sure. I sink the boat of love, but that comes later. And yes, I swallow glass, but that comes later. Yeah. Fucking it's so good. I'll, I'll read my favorite part of it. Yes, poetry. please. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, there are so many parts of this that are amazing. And like, like I said, I tried to read the whole thing on Twitter because I couldn't like click. I could not find one part to just read. But this is my favorite part. Hello, darling. Sorry about that. Sorry about the bony elbows. Sorry we lived here. Sorry about the scene at the bottom of the stairwell and how I ruined everything by saying it out loud. Especially that, but I should have known. You see, I take the parts that I remember and stitch them back together to make a creature that will do what I say or love me back. I'm sorry, I just think that that is like incredible. Like how I ruined everything by saying it out loud and then the kind of horrific body horror of like stitching the creature back together. Like, like almost that like, the love is dead and you're going to like dig it up out of the ground and like put like stuffing in it. Like, I don't know. I just think that that is amazing. And like, again, like the phone, like the hello, darling, like the kind of like you're leaving a voicemail, like, and it is hard to think back. I mean, like smartphones didn't exist when this book came out. Like we had cell phones, but, and like those were like the main form, but like, you know, nobody was on their phone like they are now type thing. So it was like, I don't know, like, and then you think, I think of almost emo lyrics too, where you're kind of like, maybe Frank O'Hare, if we want to go stick to poetry with like, like the kind of pers person, you know, what the fuck's his manifesto, uh, personism or whatever. Um, yeah. Where it's just like, you could just talk to somebody on the telephone and there's a poem, like kind of thing. If you write it as that way, oh, it's yeah. just so interesting that you bring that up in relation to emo because I wasn't thinking about this when I was making notes or anything but like so many emo bands like the front bottoms are a good example of like a sort of third wave emo band that does this but like you know it, it's almost like a trope now of third wave midwest emo that you're incorporating like voicemails you know like breakup voicemails yeah, 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 yeah. and like yeah it's really interesting that you say that that like yeah it does feel like Sykin is leaving a voicemail here. <laughs> yeah. 
it's also funny on that same page i wrote this down in the margins but earlier uh like a couple lines before i was gonna say stanzas but this whole poem is one stanza this stream of consciousness but uh let me do it right for once for the record and even something as small as that made me think of like uh so there's the song by mitski i don't know if you're familiar with but it's pink in the night i think is what it's called and the lyric is like I know I kissed you before, but I didn't do it right. So can I try again, try again, try again? And I don't know for sure that, you know, she was inspired by Saiken directly or indirectly. I do know that Mitski is very interested in poetry, has written about poetry, writes poetry herself, submits to lit mags herself on top of being a lyricist. And she kind of came of age in the same era as us. And so in my heart of hearts i believe that whether she was making an allusion to this poem or not it was influential to her <laughs> yeah I, I mean it, it's it has to be and you can never tell like i actually want to do an episode on bloom's anxiety of influence and like go into like how much we can even measure that kind of like influence from one artist to another but i think all the especially those early emo guys like Jesse and I think like clap your hands say yeah and shit like that although I guess that that kind of branches into indie rock more than emo but it's like I know he was obsessed with John Berryman he was obsessed with Plath like the confessional poets and like yeah that fucking affected it I'm sure like everybody was and like you said if it was on Tumblr like if it got very popular on like the early internet kind of forums right away I mean, they saw, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that these, these artists right. saw this and like, were inspired by it just like we are here, like gushing over it kind of like, right. Like the first section, just breathtaking, like absolutely breathtaking. Like it's, insane. it's so good. All right. Fuck. Uh, the next one I want to hit is a primer. Resources, American resources. shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life forward. I, I aspire to Heavy. boredom, I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. Has your night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do. 